Way back on the radio dial, the fire got lit inside a bright-eyed child. Every note just wrapped around his soul, from steel guitars to Memphis. Welcome back, BrewTubers. And uh, as promised, we're going to talk about a um, water profile that may be a lot harder uh, for some of you all. So let's uh, let's let's look at that. Let's let's say your water profile is a little more drastic than mine was, and you want to get your ranges down a little lower here. Well, let's say 120 is kind of high, right? You're almost at the high end, and you are going to brew a light beer, um, something like a pale ale. You want to be at the lower end of the scale. You want to be down 50 or so. So you will have to add some RO water, and you can uh, enter the percentage here that you're going to put in the mash and the sparge, and I recommend doing uh, the same. So let's say we're going to dilute our, our water with RO water by 50%, and when we do that, these ranges begin to come down. So it gives you an idea how much, so you're not having to completely rebuild your water. Uh, it saves you, it'll save you some money because uh, some of you guys, I, I know that you, you know your water's in rough shape and you, you're just going out and buying big jugs of um, RO water and then you're building your, your water profile up from the bottom up. You may not have to do the whole thing, right? So let's say 60% of that water is going to be and as you can see, I've gotten low here, um, just below the recommended range. But let's say it is a light beer, and I don't really care that I'm, I'm that close. So I'm satisfied now that my water. Now I can start adding. I can start adding a uh, a little bit of um, compounds here to bring up my water values. And voila, we're now in range. And actually, we could probably drop this a little wouldn't hurt anything. And as you see here, we have a chloride to sulfate ratio. Um, we're, we're in here. We're still balanced. And that is a key thing here that you want to look at, too. Uh, this this ratio here is pretty um, a pretty big deal in the brewing industry as far as if it's going to shift your beer to a real astringent bitter uh, beer or, you know, a Really mild, pal palatable beer. Uh, again, if you, uh, I'm not, if you are not satisfied with 5.55 uh, of your mash pH, and you can always add some acid malt here as well, and uh, drive that down look to wherever you feel comfortable. So uh, save yourself some money. Uh, get rid of the um, 5.2 mash stabilizer. Buy yourself some acid malt, and uh, a few of these chemical compounds. They go a long way because we're talking three grams and two grams. Uh, on the uh, uh, initial spar, um, sorry, the initial mash, and then 1.6 and 2.4 on the sparge water. Uh, so as a total here, you know, you're talking 3.6 grams and 5.4 grams total uh, per brewing ses session. So uh, this stuff's going to last a while, and it wasn't really that much money when I went to buy these. Uh, so I hope this helps you guys. I know it's going to help me. You'll um, want to check out John Palmer's How to Brew. Go over Chapter 15. Come back to this video. Revisit it. I also think there's some nice resources on the internet that you can read and uh, bone up on this. Uh, it's it's actually quite important uh, for for brewing, and um, it's as important as yeast and fermentation. And it's one of those things where I have just been ignoring because I thought my water was good, and it is good. It's just not good for dark beers, and um, uh, and I and I've seen that firsthand. I've I've struggled with some of the uh, darker beers, um, so I know now that uh, some of my issues were water related, and uh, I'm now going to correct for those. And also, uh, higher gravity beers. I've had stalled fermentations in the past, so I, I d typically don't do too many high gravity beers for that very reason because. Um, Oh, by the way, I have no magnesium in my water. Big yeast nutrient. So it's kind of important. And for $16.50 plus whatever the shipping is, uh, you can have uh, peace of mind, really. Uh, even if you never correct for a style of beer, i.e. in these ranges here by John Palmer, once you're in these ranges, most brew 
breweries will agree that this water set up the way it is right now is ideal for brewing beer. You just have to remember these ranges. If you're wanting something on the light side, you'll want to you want to shift the scale to the left. So you want to be closer to the low end. Uh, don't shoot for the middle of the road on any of these. Kind of think about what you're brewing. If you're brewing a stout, well yeah, you can be up on the high end and you'll want to be on the higher end on some of these. I hope that helps guys. If it doesn't, I apologize. Sometimes I'm not clear when I, I it's clear in my mind, but I don't articulate them. If I have confused anybody, please PM me uh, or uh, post a, anything down below and I will answer them. You know that I answer most of the posts <clears throat> pretty quick. I try to. I watch all your videos, guys. It's great stuff out there. Really appreciate all the, all the subs, all the kind comments. Thank you for watching. Cheers.